Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history inside your aquarium. Now, today we're going to be talking about why you should support your local fish club and it will come back to you. If you are just getting started in aquariums or aquascaping or um, raising fish, breeding fish, there is not a better resource. Uh, lots of people usually, uh, you know, Seattle actually has a fairly young club, um, but I'm envious of those clubs with all the 70-year-old men. So, in any case, I didn't get any blue shrimp, which is a bummer because I've been wanting to get more blues for this aquascape tank. What's cool, though, is that the plants I planted in the scape, the Vietnam, uh, the Rotala Rotunda Vietnam species is already reaching upward. The Rotala uh, Rotunda Pink is also, let's see if you can see the color, is pinkening up and reaching upwards quickly. It is crazy how quick it is going. The um, the plants are doing great in this tank uh, with the root tabs and just some fertilizer. The plants are all doing well. I'm not going to overkill it with the fertilizer because of the critters in here. In any case, there's room for this to grow, and it will when you see what I got tonight. Now, you may notice that the shrimp tank looks rather empty. That's because it is. So I decided to keep my best shrimp. So I have probably six adult shrimp left. Got rid of all of the shrimp that are youngins that didn't make the grade. And not to toot my own horn or anything, but they were still better than the other cherry shrimp uh, around. Nothing against other cherry shrimp. It's just... I've been pretty strict with my culling on the grades. They all had red legs at least, um, probably Sakura fire grade or something along those lines. Now in here, we still have some room to grow. We got rid of some tetras. Um, we also got rid of some more guppies. We got rid of, uh, yeah, we got rid of a few things. Guppies, as long as I have like three or four of each variety, I'll always be able to make more. Right now, it looks like we just have the purple panda guppies in here. They were a uh, panda guppy strain that um, isn't quite panda-ish-y enough for me. So now I'm curious if they will mix with her. And I'm curious to see once she's nice and pregnant, I'll put her in a breeder box and then probably move her fry into the shrimp tank or something along those lines, which also I will get into coming up here to show you why I bought what I bought uh, at the fish club. So also in this tank, pretty empty of fish, right? I'm doing pretty good. So we've got, still we've got the rocket killifish. We've got the two male guppies in here. Um, and then we've got all, obviously the pelvica chromis, teniatus Nigerian red, the cribs. They're gonna be hiding. I think they may have paired off again. They've been hiding in this area a lot. So. Let's get to the actual part, the unboxing from a fish club, if you will. So, I'll start off by saying I just told you what I brought by thinning out my tanks. I also brought some of the java fern, and I brought some of the water wisteria, which is a great one that grows quickly. Looks great um, for a short term in escape. It just it gets out of hand quickly, especially if you have CO2. You don't need CO2 with that one. But for a dollar... I managed to get all this hygro uh, pentafida, fidia, pentafidia, sorry, I still messed up how to say that. This is the same plant that's being cultured this big right now in my aquascape. This is a mat of it that is all connected, it is grown by people who know what they're doing in our club. Now, the thing is with club plants, you definitely have to look out for... Um, snails and things but luckily you know i can see that this is fertilizer this it's a two pound bag of water sprite i will be holding this on reserve for um probably for pond season um to go in a rubbermaid so that i can raise some uh some either celestial pearl danios or some white clouds or some red fire long fin meteor minnows something like that um in there <clears throat> also we had a plant of the month thing going on. This is Seattle's club, by the way. That's uh, Seattle, the greater Seattle area aquarium 
society. Um, in this plant, uh, it was a mystery plant. You had to guess what it was online, and that is what it is. It's going to be called the brownie plant to me, but I know it's brownie eye. Um, so micro, micromera brownie is what it is known as. Um, but clinopodia podium uh, brownie eye uh, is what it is known as. It gets um, nice even leaves. Uh, it kind of looks like a, a beanstalk or something like that when it gets going. Uh, it can get a lot tighter with CO2. Um, also, another great steal. Let me demiss the bag. I got these plants, which are just crazy. I got moneywort and scarlet temple plant. And the if you can see how bright that, that purple or crimson is. I don't even know for sure yet what I'm going to do, but in the club, definitely people know what they're doing. Rolling it in wool moss or mineral moss, uh, rock wool, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so that is some bright scarlet temple plant. This is some nice money wart, kind of similar plant to this. Um, but wait, I still have a whole bag of stuff. Yeah, so also... We picked up uh, some, let's see what they're officially called, but if we can get them in the light, I'm sure they're scared and tired and stuff and I need to get them out of this bag, but they are a shoaling species. It's eight orange-eyed lemon tetras and they grow up to be really beautiful with like a full orange body. I'm gonna move these guys as we speak. They're going to go in my 40-gallon since I wean down on some of the other Tetras. I think they'll be good. I think what I'm going to do is I have a viewer who probably knows who I'm talking about, <clears throat> Bentley, um, who maybe I will rehome a couple of my rainbow fish with and uh, keep this more Amazonian again and then move a couple rainbow fish. It's interesting, a couple of my shrimp, my red cherry shrimp, got out in here again or at least one has, um, but I'm not keeping any red cherry shrimp in here, so it could be a baby that was hidden in the tank for a really long time and is just showing its face because it's late tonight. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm going to pull it out uh, later. I'll turn the light off for a second, sneak up behind it with a net. Um, up next, just wait, kind members brought me more water lettuce than I will ever know what to do with. This is not just, there's not just one bag of this, but there is also a bag of another mystery plant, um, which she did not say the name of, but um, sweet girl in my club named Megan, her and her husband keep turtles and fish, and so they had plenty of that stuff. Also, I got a vine and some pothos uh, in here. This is basically, I just wanted to pull more nitrates out of that um, that aquascape tent and instead, or tank, instead of using all this, it's, this is literally two pounds of, of uh, water lettuce. Instead of using all of just that, the new idea is to use something that needs quite a bit of, uh, that can eat up quite a bit of nutrients and water out of the filter, perhaps. Uh, maybe wrap it around the filter to disguise that on the tank a little bit. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But I've got like, I don't know, eight feet of vine or something there. Next up is the uh, Money Wart and Scarlet Temple Plant uh, assemblage here. Um, you know what? We'll... we'll uh, We'll just put these together, let's see here, so I can keep them all straight, and uh, keep the vine back in here, there we go, alright, so the hits keep coming, just some literature, if you're in the northwest area, the Aquatic Gardeners Association, check that out. Um, then there is a mystery container, which is A. Renickii uh, Serogen Repens, and something, it says that it's not Pelia, um, or Sawasertang, but I'm pretty positive it is. But whatever. I like Sawasertang. And I also like, um, I also like uh, both these plants. So 
we're good to go on that. It goes well with my color scheme. Those will probably be going into this tank after I um, allow them to desnail in the shrimp tank first. Next up, these are my little prize. I paid $5 for these. These are Japanese black guppies and they have the craziest fin structure I have ever seen. And I'm really hoping I can cross some other guppies with these. I'm stoked on that. I don't know which tank I want to put them in yet. Do I put them in this tank? Or do I put them in the 40 gal? I think with the new Tetras that might be a bit much. I don't know. We'll see where the temperature's at. These guys are going to cook tonight if I, from where they've been. But we'll put them there for now. Um, then we've also got yet another bag of, um, I think there's red leaf, red root floater. I think there's also, um, some, uh, cat's tongue and some, there's also duckweed and, um, let's see what else is in here. Cat's tongue, duckweed, um, frog bit, it looks like. Um, so yeah, another, Another score there. I got this not knowing how much I would come across. So basically, I traded all of that stuff for this plus the um, plus the uh, eight lemon eye tetras, and then these beautiful guppies. Um, they are really cool. That fin shape is just awesome and it looks like the males and the females stand out great which is awesome if you're going to crossbreed um it just it, it ruins a true line but it definitely definitely allows you to have some fun as a hobbyist so just wanted to encourage you guys to check out your local club this stuff will probably be going in a pond um the pond outside, I see there's snails in it and stuff like that. Let's see, focus. Okay, yeah, snails in it and stuff like that. But um, I'm really excited because I got a lot of really good stuff here. And I basically just traded stuff that I've created here. And now I have more things to trade and create. Still have a good amount of shrimp. And the next batch of shrimp, now all those genes are gone of the ones that I didn't want anyways. Let's take a look at these bad boys under the light. The next goal is to get a light, but these guys are scared as I'll get out. And they have got that orange eye. And I'll have to you'll have to look up a picture of these orange eye lemon tetras. They are just awesome and beautiful. I'm gonna get them out of here as soon as possible. Um, you know, I want to the other thing is, at, the, at a local club, you should still quarantine your plants, don't get me wrong, but if you really know that the breeder in your club is like world-class level, the nice thing is that you don't need to really worry about it because their tanks and their fish are cleaner than mine, that's for sure. So we have a couple members in our club, like, I mean, formerly Gary Lang was up here. I'm like, we've got some big names that are, have been coming through town and people are getting fish from. We've got um, Dean Tweedle and, um, oh, let's see, Leslie gave a speech tonight at our club. So good times. Uh, he does uh, labyrinth fish and cichlids. Uh, he works for the Gates Foundation. He gave a nice talk and that'll be on the GSAS website if anybody's interested. But look forward to new history videos and science videos on this stuff. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy your night. Thank you so much for all the support the channel's been getting. It's really been gaining traction. Um, you know, if we could, by the end of the third month, be at a 1,000 subscribers, that would blow my friggin' mind and it would also take us to monetization zone which is a bridge we'll cross when we get to it um but the patreon supporters out there thank you guys so much um i really want to hear what you want to see if you like seeing unboxings and just me giving kind of overviews of what's going on in my tank since i play musical fish so much and 
move plants around. The idea being that I buy a $3 plant somewhere and then I grow it out. I sell those portions and I get, a, you know, abuse or a crip, something rare. And then I grow that out and then I sell that and move up the chain. So I started with cherry shrimp. Now I've got blue dream shrimp. So that's the idea. Um, and I hope you guys uh, like seeing the process, like seeing this from a hobbyist point of view. Uh, and the giveaway that I mentioned, um, I think we're going to wait for the uh, the guppies to give birth, the two different kinds right now, the endlers and the uh, Japanese cross guppies, the blue tails, or yellow tail blue Japanese guppies, um, just so that uh, we can sex them out and send people pairs and stuff like that. So I'm hoping maybe a month to two months or something like that, but I might be doing some things earlier just because I feel guilty, like it's wrong if I don't send you guys something sooner than that. So um, thank you again, you guys, and uh, I'll be back with another scientific video, probably getting back on track with talking about new species of shrimp to the hobby. So all right, guys, take it easy, and I will talk to you later. Oh, last thing. I was going to do a video also on the most ancient fish in the world. So I was going to do a whole series on stuff you have in your aquarium that's older than dinosaurs. That sort of thing. So uh, if you think that'd be cool, let me know in the comments, uh, and I'll work on that. And it could be an ongoing series, too. But there's some pretty cool stuff out there that has evolved really properly. <laughs> Got it right the first time. All right, guys, well, take it easy. Take care of your tanks. Take care of yourself. Don't forget to love the people around you, the critters around you, and the nature around you. Help it grow. Bring it inside if you have to, if you can't find it outside near your house, if you're in the city like me. And uh, don't forget to swim on, you guys. Talk to you later.